Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bad MMA Math for another video. Now, with my predictions already out of the way for who I think is going to end the year as champion in every single division in 2024, um, if you haven't had a look at that, go and check it out. Uh, for this one, I, watch, I wanted to actually do the opposite and have a look at potential rising stars from each division who I consider to be dark horses for 2024. Now to make this clear, barring a miracle or two down the way, uh, none of these men are likely to be champion in 2024. Uh, these guys I think that, uh, these are guys that I think could possibly have breakout years that will have them sitting in or around the top five. Now I have had, had to set myself a few rules for this one to make it a little bit more challenging. Uh, firstly, None of these men can currently be sitting in the top 15, although you will have heard of some of them. Uh, and secondly, um, I'm going to choose people that may have slipped under the radar so far, have maybe suffered a blip in recent years and are no longer talked about as or they're far enough down the rankings where they won't be expected to even have a sniff at the top five by 2025. Now, of course, they have to currently be on the UFC roster, uh, just to make this a little bit of a tricky one. I'm not going to include anyone who is not yet signed, but is very likely to sign, or this one could get very, very messy. So, here is one fighter from every division that I believe can defy expectations and be in and around the top five in each division by the end of 2024. All right, so looking at flyweight first, uh, my pick is a guy that only made his debut back in August of last year, where he made really light work of Ode Osborne, and that's a man by the name of Asu Almabayev. Uh, let's have a gander at what makes this guy so dangerous. Now, the reason I like this guy in particular is that outside of having a great deal of snap and power in his shots, he has an elite ground game, which is an impressive thing to say at flyweight, considering they're all pretty good down there. Uh, comparatively, I think he's actually a cut above. Uh, he has a knack for getting his opponents set up into awkward positions and then unexpectedly snapping limbs or snatching limbs into awkward positions. So he can put you in danger in moments when you feel you're most safe. He can carry power late into fights, which is always a very dangerous attribute and is credited with a number of third round finishes to back that up. Now, I expect a number of fighters from this region to emerge this year with uh, obviously um, 
Shavkat Rachmanov leading the way from this region. Uh, they have one of the most lo uh, loyal, rabid fan bases in the sport. And with flyweight shallow from the top 10 downwards, I give this man a great chance to clamber up the division like a goddamn spider monkey. Uh, he takes on CJ Vergara at UFC 299. So watch out for this guy. I think he's going to have a devastating performance. He's a very dangerous man. All right, so Bantamweight. And the guy I've chosen to potentially make a splash at Bantamweight uh, is one that very much falls into the coming off of a small blip category that I alluded to earlier. Uh, fighting out of MMA Labs, I've selected Kyla the Matrix Phillips. Uh, let's have a little look at what tools this guy brings to the table. Now, Kyla had a bit of a strange 18 months, to say the least. Uh, he lost a really close fight with Julian Paiva, a very close one, and was given a USADA suspension, which collectively worked together to curb this man's hype. Uh, it's easy to forget that the guy before had a very convincing win against Song Yedong, who is close himself to getting near title contention. Uh, what I like about this guy is his ability to use distance really beautifully and to land unorthodox strikes from really unorthodox positions with incredible accuracy. His takedown defense in a division where you need to make it, need to make it uh, ripples. And he's special to me for being pretty unpredictable in his nature. Now he recently got back on track with wins against Rojo and Barcelos and is also stated to fight Pedro Munoz also at UFC 299. Who, who I expect he will actually be an underdog against. Uh, this is going to be a tough taste, a sorry, a tough test. But I expect him to cause a shock and propel himself up the rankings um, with a very good win. So look out for this man, Kyla Phillips. All right, now Featherweight. This is a man I'm actually picking for a number of reasons. The first being that when he made his debut last year against Mozart Evluev, I predicted that he would survive, uh, surprise everyone and potentially beat him. And I was mercilessly trolled about it on Twitter. So I'm grateful that he, uh, he helped me shut some pie holes up who called this man to be a lamb to slaughter. Uh, the man I'm referring, referring to, of course, is one of the newcomers of the year, Diego Lopez. Uh, let's give ourselves a little reminder of what this savage is all about.
Now, Diego Lopez has a few attributes to me that make me very high on him. Uh, he's got really good movement. He can knock your head clean to the moon. But what kind of pushed him over to the edge, over the edge, is that he is massively big and powerful for the division. He's a really hard guy to get down. He's got really slick trips and pull, pulls uh, when he's pulling things to the ground himself. And even if you do on top of him, he's not going to lay in guard and start pissing his pants. He is going to terrorize you down there to the point that you're probably going to regret having taken him down in the first place. And he does it all rocking a mullet without looking like a total mong. So he deserves bonus points for that. With Featherweight again being a little weak between 10 and 15, I expect him to bag an opponent in this region that he will starch and propel him into a top 10 fight at the midpoint of the year. I think he'll bag another win at that point and find himself sitting near the top five by the end of the year. With his all-round ability, he will represent a nightmare for anyone in this division. All right, so lightweight now. I'm actually gonna head back to Eastern Europe for this next Savage, who will be a little bit more well-known to UFC audiences with some stellar performances last year. And that man is Polish power keg, Mateusz Rebecki. Uh, if you haven't had the pleasure, let's take a quick look at this man's highlight reel. So Mateus is the true definition of the jack of all trades that is actually quite the master of many. So not quite the definition of a jack of all trades. Uh, he started out with a BJJ base and has brutal boxing and straight punches that make him legitimately dangerous. Uh, what makes this man stand out a little bit for me though is not his takedown game, which is great. It's not his power, which is also great. It's not his cardio, which may actually be the only weakness that this man has. Can't really be described as crappy, but he does gas terribly and usually spends the fight beacon, beating the hell out of his opponents so badly that they're clinging on for dear life and have no opportunity to, cap, uh, to capitalize. For me, it's the way that this man utilizes leg kicks. He just batters away mercilessly, letting absolutely nothing deter him. Now, as Rogan won't shut up about, calf kicks are a nightmare and very few deliver them with the ferocity and relentlessness, relentlessness that this man does. I think if he finds himself, I think, uh, sorry, he finds himself sniffing around the top five with two nice wins by the end of the year. All right, now welterweight. This is where I kind of went a little bit rogue. And to be honest, this one's a little bit of a stab in the dark. 
And most people are going to disagree with this because he's had a loss in the UFC, but he has bounced back really well again. And is someone that is quite far outside the rankings and probably expected to be a little bit of a journeyman. Uh, my choice is Brian Pooh Bear Battle. Or should I say the newly minted Brian the Butcher Battle? Which somehow sounds even fucking dumber. Someone needs to help this man. Your name is Battle. This is not hard. Maybe drop some suggestions in the comments. Let's help this man out. Uh, as in the way we've been doing now, let's have a look at some of this man's fantastic handiwork. Now this one I admit really is a wild card because he did get annihilated by Renat F uh, Fakretinov, I believe. But genuine talent outside the top 15 is pretty sparse. Uh, he's looked much improved in his last two bounce back wins. Is absolutely massive for the division and is again pretty well rounded and powerfully oversized for this division. He has a really solid cardio base and I'm ba basing this pick on him continuing to show the forward steps he has been taking in his last two. I'm actually a great believer that losses can be um, the best thing for up and coming fighters to go through. He does have a weird body type though, just picturing him in my mind. Um, you know, he's got that fabled fat skinny body that Nate, D Nate Diaz made famous. But yeah, look out for Brian Battle. I think he's going to have a very, very good year. All right, now looking at middleweight, I've actually selected a fighter who has made a career by deliberately getting his opponents to underestimate him. And that man is Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. Uh, let's see some of this man's notable actions inside the cage. All right, so why am I so high on Anthony Hernandez? Well, I can spout on about how well-rounded the guy is like I have with others, how accomplished he is as a submission specialist, his exquisite takedown game. He's a striker that isn't the most textbook or diverse, but he's incredibly effective in what he does. He's defensively very responsible and is very much a pressure-based fighter who gives you no time and space to apply your game plan in there. Uh, what impresses me the most about this guy, other than the undeniable skill sets that I've just alluded to, is that he is an absolute cardio monster. He won't just apply a pressure to his opponent, he will keep it going non-stop for three whole rounds, and that makes him an extremely tough proposition for anyone, especially at middleweight, where cardio can be a bit of an issue for fighters. Uh, we won't have to wait long to be re reminded of what this man can do when he takes on Ikram Aliskarov at UFC 298. Uh, many would have expected to probably see him on this list instead, and he will probably go in as a very sizable favourite against Fluffy. But I'm going to call this now. I think Fluffy is going to beat him and make a beeline for the top 10 in the process. Clip this shit. I really believe in Fluffy Hernandez, and I think he's going to get the job done against Aliskarov.
Okay. Now again, light heavyweight is a little bit thin outside the top 15. You could probably pr- argue that it's pretty shit outside the top five, to be honest. Um, I was actually tempted to select uh, Carlos Ulberg, but I hate that asshole and his can crushing, play it safe, cringy personality. So I'm going to select someone that caught my eye way further down the rankings and go with Brazilian light heavyweight bruiser Victor Petrino. Again, let's have a look at what this monster can do. Now, again, I think, uh, as is illustrated, I think pretty damn obviously here. Petrino is a decent striker that can knock your head clean off. He uses boxing and kickboxing. He mixes strikes up intermittently with slick head movement and a very high guard. You know, I like how just I like uh, defensively responsible fighters. So he has a style that makes him very tough to hit and a range of weapons that make him very unpredictable and therefore very dangerous. But what I like about this guy more than anything is how he uses trips and raw power to aggressively take people down and then aggressively smash them into mulch on the ground. When he needs to, he displays a, a, a power in this division that is quite rare to witness by effortlessly picking up and massive um, and dunking absolutely massive opponents and Hulk smashing them into the map. His entries are good, his counters are well fought out, he's shown an array of ground attacks that make him scary to play with down there too. He's latched up limbs, limbs, got rear naked chokes in his career. He's quick and powerful, he can crack moving forwards, he can crack moving backwards, and I expect him to notch a win outside the top 15, and at least another impressive win in the top 15, to set himself up for a run in the title for the title in 2025. I mean, for God's sake, People have been sucking off Khalil Roundtree, and this man would absolutely smash him. All right, on to heavyweight. Again, kind of by process of elimination, this is kind of an easy one for me. We know that UFC is literally the UFC's bum hole and smells like one. So the pickings outside of the, of the top five, let alone the top 15, are beyond slim. So my selection for this one is a fighter who recently made his um, debut in the promotion officially, dispatching Martin Boudet, who, while not the best fighter in the world, was in a, on a hell of a win streak of his own, and he got toasted in there, and that is Shamil Gatsiev. Now, let's do this properly and have a look at some of his highlights. Now, outside of being a very compassionate individual, as you could see in that replay, uh, that doesn't attempt to immediately turn his opponents into ground paste when he clearly has them beat, uh, Shamil has a really well-rounded skill set in a division that is extremely underskilled below a certain point. 
Uh, he has fantastic head movement. He hits like a truck from awkward angles and has a really excellent knack of patiently applying effective grappling and ground and pound to get the fight done and dusted. He never lays in praise. He brings an immense forward pressure. And for some reason, when this guy hits you, it causes his opponents to freeze. Uh, will he be the heavyweight champion of the world? Not as long as Tom Aspinall is around, and I don't like that matchup for him. But I can see him having really interesting matchups with anybody in the division outside of that. So for that reason, my pick for Dark Horse in the heavyweight division in 2024 is Shamil Gatsiev. All right, so as always, do you agree or disagree? Is there anyone you might have rather seen? Of course there will be. Uh, thanks to all of you for tuning in for another one. Uh, like and subscribe and share, and I'll see you all for the next one. Got a lot lined up this week that you're going to absolutely love. Have a great one. Peace.